All right, hello everybody. Happy New Year 2024. This uh, video I'm going to be looking at Daniel chapter 5 in our continuation of the study of Daniel. And also, uh, it'll, it, this part is also related to Babylon the Great. So we'll take some uh, a closer look at uh, Babylon the Great that we've looked at before in the Revelation. So uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like these videos. Okay, now we've already covered some of Daniel in chapter uh, 1 to 4, and uh, well, more 2 to 4. In our last video, we talked about Nebuchadnezzar having the vision of the tree that was cut down and a band of iron and brass put around the stump and uh, seven times passed over it and um, that actually happened to him where he became a madman and, and lived like a beast for seven years and um, then he was restored to his kingdom when he acknowledged that God is the one who sets up kings and takes them down and all the kingdoms of the earth belong to God. So now chapter 5 is about the, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And um, his name was Belteshazzar. And he um, lost the kingdom. Now the way the Babylon fell was the Medes and the Persians to the north of Babylon, they joined forces with others also. And it was all these nations that were cruelly treated by Babylon and who had had enough. And it was a revolution. And, and they, the, north, the northern nations, especially Medes and Persians, joined together forces and they turned on Babylon and they attacked Babylon. And what happened was that they uh, diverted the river. The, the river was, would go underneath the city at a certain place. They had a part of the river diverted which, w which would go underneath the city wall and then go through the city so that they had the, it was a huge city. So they had the river going through the city. And what they did was they diverted that part of the river so that it dried up and they walked underneath the, the army marched underneath the city wall. And that's how Babylon was taken in one night. So now these things have implications for Babylon the Great. Now Babylon the Great some would uh, identify it as Rome in, uh, in the time of Nero. And that is uh, probably true. Um, the fall of Babylon related to the fall of Rome. But there's also uh, there's a recycling of prophecy. It goes through another cycle. Because we're not at the New Jerusalem yet. We're not at the kingdom of God just yet. We still have this evil kingdom trying to take over the world. And that is Babylon the Great. It's, it's the, the evil kingdom that runs the world. And we're looking at descriptions of this in evil kingdom from ancient times to get clues about the identity of this kingdom. And today we're going to learn more about this and, and about why it's important today to identify this evil kingdom and to uh, just to know what, what that is. Let's take a look now at Daniel chapter 5. And Belshazzar is the son of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And I'm going to breeze through the the first part of it because it's uh, just telling this the background story and then we'll we'll go in more detail as we see things that we need to point out 
Belshazzar the king made a great feast, and a thousand of his lords drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines might drink from them. And they brought the golden vessels that were taken from the temple of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines, drank in them. And they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver and brass and iron and wood and of stone. And in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the place, the plaster, of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw a part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed. He was in shock, right? And his knees hit one another. <laughs> he was shaken at the knees. And the king cried aloud, Bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold around his neck and a third and be the third ruler in the kingdom. So now this, this shows us a little bit about the hierarchy of Babylon. So the third ruler would have would be wearing a scarlet robe with a gold chain around his neck these were the signs of rulership and leadership and that was the third ruler probably the top ruler had all that and a crown and this is where we get the saying the writing is on the wall when god wrote on the wall he wrote something on the wall and it freaked him right out okay so then all the wise men came, and they could not read the writing or make known to the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet, and the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts trouble you, nor let your consonants be changed. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king, I say your father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said to Daniel, are you Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, who the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, but they could, should read this writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me the interpretation, you shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king that you should like and subscribe and share this video. Now... Daniel, the way he answered Nebuchadnezzar in the previous time was a lot different than the way he's, he's going to answer this king. The way he answered Nebuchadnezzar when he saw his, the interpretation of his dream, he said, O king, 
Let the dream be about your enemies and not about you. But now what does he say to the king's son? Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be to yourself and give your rewards to another. I don't want anything to do with it. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor, and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would sl slay, and whom he would keep alive, and whom he would set up, and whom he would put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses, and they fed him with grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whosoever he will. And you, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled your heart, though you knew all this. Because Belshazzar Shazar is his son, so he knew that his father went through that for seven years. And he knew that story. But he was even more proud than his father. Because he drank out of the vessels of the house of God from Jerusalem. Which um, probably people warned him not to. But you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. So you make yourself equal to the Lord of heaven to drink from his vessels. And they brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine in them, and you have praised the gods of silver, gold, and brass, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand your breath is, and whose are all your ways, you have not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Now this looks to me, I think it's Aramaic, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Uperison. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, which is like shekel, right? You are weighed in the balances and found wanting. Because in those days they had like a balance, you know, the balance scale. And they would weigh things to measure out for commerce. Uh, everything was sold by weight and money was by weight. How many shekels of gold or how many shekels of silver for this much of the product. So you are weighed in the balances and you are too light. Okay. And Perez. That's a division. Your kingdom is divided. And given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar. And they clothed Daniel with scarlet. And put a chain of gold, gold on his neck. And made a proclamation concerning him. That he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius, the Median, took the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So there's Darius, king of the, the, king of the Medes, and, and eventually became king of the Persians. So, now, this is the lesson. Now, for us today to understand what what should what should we learn today the main thing for us to learn today is this babylon this sign of babylon and this is the fall of babylon
which is a very important event. So how did the fall happen? What, what was it that he made himself equal to the God of heaven and he drank even from the vessels of God and not only did he do that, but he, ch he toasted the gods of iron and stone and brass which have no eyes, they cannot see, they have eyes but they can't see, they have ears but they can't hear, they see not and hear not and know not because they don't have a brain. Okay, so they, they use God's vessels to, um, to cheer these things. Okay, now we will take a look at the book of Revelation and um, talk a little bit about Babylon the Great. This is this final entity that is like a kingdom over the kings of the earth that um, that is in opposition to God but it has a hold on God's people so this is the curious thing and and this is um, the prophecy that was given that to show God's people what would come in the future and that's where we are now. We are in that future. This is Revelation chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and he and the earth was lightened with his glory. So all the people of the earth ha were enlightened. <laughs> okay? And he cried mightily with a strong voice. This is a this is not the first time. This is, I think, the third time that an angel came down to say this. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Now, that there can be two, a uh, couple of meanings for is fallen. Is fallen would be when a city has fallen, then it has become a ruin and been taken over. Um this is talking about a church. A church is fallen. It is no longer serving God. It has been it is fallen like a city. It has been taken over by an enemy. It is serving something else. Okay? It is fallen and it has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. Now, it wasn't that before, it has become that. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So this is a church. Whenever the prophecy is talking about a woman, it's talking about a church. Or, or a system of worship. Okay? So all the nations, all the kings of the earth, all the leaders, drink the wine. So this is a mixture that she makes. The wrath of her fornication. Her fornication is that she is taking the things of God and giving them to devils. Okay, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Okay, so what what is this? The ki how do the kings of the earth commit fornication with her? How do the kings of the earth give what belongs to God? They take what belongs to God and give it to devils. Now, at the risk of sounding ridiculous, uh, let's talk about Santa Claus. Is Santa Claus a, a fake god? He sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you you're awake. He writes down everything you do 
And at the end of the year, if you're good, you get a present. But if you're bad, then you don't, boys and girls. So, and he rides across the sky, right? This is, this is a fake god. So, they take the, the you know, the, the, there was never any command in the Bible associated with December 25th. That's a, that's a Roman pagan holiday. That, that, that day is associated with the solstice festival, the worshiping of the sun. So, you know, I'm not going to go on a, a long spiel about all this, but this is well known by now. People know about this stuff. And so you want an example of how the kings of the earth take the things of God and give it to the devils? Well, there's one example. Uh, New Year's Day in 3000 BC in Babylon. New Year's Day, the turning of the winter solstice, was the time when the king of Babylon would go into the temple and take the hand of Bel, the god of Babylon, which would mean like this idol of something had a hand and he would shake its hand and renew his commitment to the city and to the people. And it was the beginning of the new year and it was a great festival. And th that's, we still celebrate New Year's which has its roots in uh, Babylonian culture, I wouldn't think so much that we give God's glory to some foreign god on New Year's. I, I don't know how that would work, but Santa Claus, definitely, absolutely. They're giving God's glory to something else, to a fake story, okay? And not only that, and, and it, it's especially for children, so it's especially hurtful to God. That's the way, you know, a Christian a, a Christian looks at it. So, you know, if you want to know the reality, that it, that's the kind of stuff. Like Halloween, I right? How about Halloween? It's uh, really got nothing to do with God. It's got everything to do with uh, demons and evil, and skeletons, and skulls, and murder, and blood, and, you know, death. It's got everything to do with that, which is against God. So, you know, it's not like there's nothing that you can look at that would, that would fit these narratives, okay? So they committed fornication with her, this, this queen, or whatever she is, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So this has got to do with merchant shipping. What does merchant shipping have to do with this? The merchants of the earth get rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Oh, so God's people are in this church. Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. So there's a judgment coming. And if you don't get out of her, then you will share in that judgment. Get out of her, my people, that you do not share in her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven. So what did Babylon do in ancient times? He took the cup of God and he drank from it to the glory of statues and things made of stone, things made of iron and brass and gold, and fake gods, other gods, fake gods, and goddesses, by the way, fake goddesses. Uh, the mother goddess was one of the chief deities in ancient pagan um, Middle East. Um, she came in many forms, um, but basically a giver of life, that kind of stuff. Um, the... Uh, So, yeah, they got that too, don't they? Mother goddess, yep. 
So, you know, it's just checking the boxes here, okay? So, for her sins have reached to heaven. Now, Babylon's sins reached to heaven when he drank from God's cup, okay? And God remembered her iniquities, her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. I'm not so sure what this exactly means. In the cup which she filled, filled to her double. So the cup that she filled with all of this lies and crap that has nothing to do with God. Filled to her double with truth, maybe? How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. She had everything she ever wanted. So much torment and sorrow give to her. For she's now so much torment. So she was causing torment and sorrow to somebody. And it's, and they, and, and, and there, it's time to pay her back. Okay, for she says in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am not a widow, and I will see no sorrow. So uh, a widow is, God is not dead. I am a queen, and God is not dead. Because the church is the wife of God, right? So I'm a queen, God, God is the king, and God is not dead. And I shall see no sorrow. I'm going to be nothing but happy from now on. Okay. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Just like Babylon in ancient times. One night. There wasn't even a siege. In one night it fell to the, Me to the Medes. Death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire just like Babylon in ancient times. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication with her. So what does every king of the earth, every president of the United States, every prime minister of Canada, all the world leaders, all um, go and bow and give their... Um, their allegiance to one particular church because if they don't then they won't get the votes right you want them votes right there's a lot of votes that go along with going the bow to that queen okay So they all, the kings of the earth, committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. They shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off. Right now they're going to distance themselves from her. Okay? Because uh, it's bad for votes. Right? It's bad for... Uh, their look. It's a bad look. <laughs> so they're going to stand far off and bewail her and lament for her. They're going to be sad. They want her. They don't want her to go down, but they're not. They're going to pretend that they're, they're going to be standoffish about the whole thing when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise any more. So what is this with the merchant shipping, international shipping? It's got something to do with this. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and pearls, and fine linen, and purple. Purple is the royal color, the sign of royalty, right? And silk, and scarlet, that's also a sign of royalty. 
and all thy wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, all the elephant tusks, all the most precious wood, brass and iron and marble, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour, wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots or cars and slaves, the slave trade, the souls of men. The souls of men are also being traded on the open market. Okay? And the fruits that your soul lusted after, still talking to the Babylon the Great, and are, they are departed from you. You've lost them. And all the things which were dainty and goodly are departed from you. And you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of those things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off. Oh, they'll also distance themselves from her for the fear of her torment. They don't want anything to do with that, with her torment. Weeping and wailing and saying. So they're going to be the same as the politicians and the, the, saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold. What gold is that? Is that all the gold that the ships brought from all over the earth to that city? And precious stones and pearls, everything. It's all on the idols and on the crowns, right? For in one hour, all these riches came to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. So all the merchant ships, they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like this great city? It's the greatest city in the world. And the city of gold, right? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea, by reason of her costliness. So what is her costliness? Does, could that have something to do with the military industrial complex? Like a lot of money flows into that. A lot of money. Tax money. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her heaven. And you holy apostles and prophets. For God has avenged you on her. Killer of the prophets. Killer of the holy ones. The people who stand for the word of God. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harps and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in you. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft. Oh, uh, we got Michelangelo, um... Leonardo, uh, some of the greatest works in, uh, in the world shall be found any more in you. And the sound of a millstone stone shall be heard no more at all in you. And the light of a candle, a lot of candles, shall shine no more at all in you. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride in charge of weddings, right, shall be heard no more at all in you. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, and by your sorceries, sorceries, you know what sorceries are? The nations were deceived. Sorceries are, are like spells, like stories, and, and causing people to believe something, to have power over them, something that's not necessarily true. And all the nations were deceived. They thought that this cup that she was carrying was actually worth something and that actually was from God but it wasn't or it was from God 
but she was using it to worship devils. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints. Oh, uh, how many people were boiled in oil, burned at the stake, tortured in the, in the gallows, and in the torture chambers. Maybe they still have torture chamber, chambers. I don't know. We just don't know about it. And all that were slain upon the earth. So we can go on. But I don't know if you've guessed it yet. Have you guessed it yet? The purple, scarlet, gold city. Well, I don't know. In my opinion, it would be, uh, it would look something like this. You know, there's your scarlet, there's your whatever this is. What is this? There's the candles, there's all the gold. This is real gold, you know. This is the gold. The candles and this, whatever this thing is. This is some, some, it has eyes but it can't see. It has a mouth but it can't speak. It has no brain, can't think. But this is the, what they give all of God's glory to this, whatever that is. It's got a crown on its head too, right? Gold. Blood gold. I don't know. That's what I think it means. A lot of people think so. S <clears throat> So, Happy New Year. Um, we'll carry on with our book of Daniel. It gets quite good from here. We get into more um, the four beasts and things like that. So, stay tuned. Subscribe. Hit the little notification bell if you want to get notified when I put out a video. And these aren't the most liked videos by the established those in power. So, we need your help to keep it going and keep, um, you know, this is my take on it. If you have a different opinion, I'd like to hear about it. Um, I've already heard a lot of different opinions on it, but it seems pretty obvious to me. Thank you very much. And uh, as far as the merchant shipping... Take a look at the law of the sea. Do some research about that. The law of the sea. We'll see you next time.